Now we're talking about uh, adjusting values in photographs. Uh, most values need, or most photographs need adjusting value-wise, because um, the camera doesn't always show the depth, the, the value changes of things receding, um, and also separation between the different planes. And as an artist, we want to be able to paint what we know. In other words, we want to know there has to be a separation of value when the form changes. For instance, when you have a vertical uh, plane here, that has to be a different value from the flat plane. And it's kind of obvious there. Uh, but it's not very obvious in the background. This uh, foreground area here is about the same value as the background area there and it's about the same value as this slanted so there's not much value change so there's really lacks depth it um, this whole background just flattens out like that and we want to be able to um, show depth in there and if we're not aware of what the value should be doing or you're not um, um, painting what you know as well as what you see, it can cause a lot of trouble. Same thing in the background trees. The value of the foreground pine trees here about the same as there. Not much difference all the way back. And again, that's very flat. Um, this whole area here is just one big flatness. There's no depth there at all. So again, we want to be able to look at the photograph and decide how to change that. And you can do that in the thumbnail. And when you get a photograph, it's a good idea to uh, uh, do as many thumbnails as you can to uh, see how you want to approach the composition, where changes need to be made, but also value-wise. And I don't mean a finished drawing, but just a very simple um, two or three value changes as these trees recede or as the hills recede back in here. Um, and also the separation of the value in the planes. In other words, the sky is close to the same value as the water. I'd want to separate those a little bit. Uh, probably making the water darker than the sky. The water gets a little washed out. I can make the water lighter in the sky. The key is they can't be too close to the same, which they are now. Uh, so I made some changes here. And starting in the background, when you look at it, I've really separated the value of these background trees in here. Made them lighter plus cooler so they stay back there. Without that value change and temperature change, you know, there's just a big, there's a flatness there that uh, really doesn't work. But doing this, making this lighter, a little cooler, or a lot cooler in this case, um, and making the shadows up here slightly darker and warmer than the background. It separates and creates a bit more depth. Changing the real strong orange in the background here to a um, to more of a, a warm violet, which still looks sunlit, but the violet uh, keeps it back in the background. And just popping the darks in here a little bit lighter here and these back in here. They're too dark to be that far away. They're just as dark here as they are here. And again, that causes a flatness. So we want to be aware of that. And you know, the computer is a great tool to use. And I can pull up these images and make these changes. If you don't have uh, Photoshop, there's a free download. There's probably more than one. But this one's called GIMP, G-I-M-P. So www.gimp. Dot com and you can you can download it for free uh, insert photographs and um, adjust the adjust the values and I'm not doing you know great lengths here um, but a few big simple changes and I carried maybe a bit farther but I, I separated it here I had these greens slightly darker and a lot more intense, not as muted as the greens back in here. Now these two are probably the same color mixtures. Both of them, some kind of ultramarine blue, cad yellow, a little bit of orange. The difference is um, 
In the background, I'll probably add a bit more violet and just a bit of white. In the foreground yellow greens, I don't cool it down with a violet. Um, but I add some more orange, maybe a touch of cad red to knock it down slightly, but not much. But there's an intensity difference between these two and between this back in here. And it's real easy to get everything looking green. So I want to, um, you know, the hillside has this, this is August in, um, near Sheridan, Wyoming. So, you know, the grass is kind of dried up, which has a nice color to it in the summer. It beats uh, everything being too yellow-green. Uh, so I just made it more of a muted orange. Um, some muted greens that's all warm because it's all sunlit. And I also got rid of a lot of the detail. Some of this detail in here. Also the detail in the center of the uh, creek. I don't like that little island there with the tree right in the center. So just taking that out. Because my focus here, what I liked about this spot was, the, and I'm thinking abstractly, is the real strong diagonals of the of the creek, and then the real strong vertical darks lines of the of the trees, and and then you have all these angles. There's not very many straight lines at all in here, which is which is nice. So even here, I might want to vary the shape a little bit keep it from being too too straight. So this is those simple changes. Uh, also adjusting the darks. Again, the lightest dark is way back in here, more on the blue side than anything. A little bit darker bluish green. Then the dark accents here are darker yet, and then the darkest darks are here. So strongest colors in the foreground in here. Uh, darkest darks in here, and it really pulls that forward where before it's flattened out. And adding the temperature change in the background gives it a lot more depth also. But a couple of paintings here. Um, this is a painting by, um, gosh, his name just left me. I'm going to go to the next one. This is Arthur um, Streeter. Or Arthur Streeton, I'm sorry, he was an Australian painter, early 20th century. And you can really see the separation, whether it was there or not, don't know, but a definite value change in the sky, the ground, uh, the flat grass, the upright trees, all these are different values. Even the slanted hillside is a different value than the flat road. If he makes any of these the same value, it's going to flatten out. And again, every time the form changes, you want a value to change. Uh, so the darks in the upright trees are going to be a little darker than the darks in the sh on the flat ground, the shadows. Um, really keeping that, that separate. And the detail is almost non-existent, except where he wants to have a little bit. And that's right in here in the trees and fences. So the simpler you can keep things, or the longer that you can keep things real simple, uh, the easier it is to read the painting. The, that the big shapes are simple, the big values are simple, then the color will become a lot easier to deal with. And uh, you can get more creative with it. But if your shapes are too broken up, and you're, you have too many values, then color becomes almost impossible. I okay, have another... Streeton here, Arthur Streeton. Again, same thing here. Uh, probably the rooftop is the lightest than the sky. And I'm talking about lights right now, and then the light flat ground, and then the dark verticals are darkest. Of course, the house is a uh, dark vertical, but it's a white house, so it's not going to get that dark. Uh, but if it was a white house on white snow against a white sky, the vertical house would be the darkest. Here it's not. It's a white house against a bunch of darker values. But everything being equal, your verticals are generally going to be your darkest, and then your flat or your sky plane will be the lightest. But the key is, is to keep them separate. And again, the simplicity here really helps um, adjust those values pretty easily. So painting what you know as well as what you see 
uh, goes a long way when you're working with uh, photographs.